EVA foam is probably one of the best materials to use as a cosplayer. It's perfect to make almost any proper armor and people have been making the most insane builds with it. But if you're just getting into cosplay, it might be a bit overwhelming. In this video, we will discuss the basics and help you get crafting. EVA foam is the most accessible and affordable way to craft armor and props. The material is pretty squishy, but it can also be sturdy if you need it to be. Those yoga mats and those puzzle pieces are a thing too, but it also has to be said that it's just not good quality. So it's something you will have to decide for yourself. Cosplay Shop EVA foam comes in four sizes in thickness. Two, five, seven, and 10 millimeters. There is a reason they come in different sizes. Overall, the five and seven millimeter ones get used the most to make armor and props out of. Two millimeter gets used mostly to add some details on top of the foam. Never make your armor out of two millimeter foam. It will be too thin and be like crafting armor out of paper. Then the 10 millimeters get used for thicker armor and often in props. It's also just easier than having to stack thinner foam on top of each other. If you need to make something even bigger that the 10 millimeter foam just doesn't cover, foam blocks also exist. All these sheets can be bought in big and small sizes. The bigger ones don't even fit on our table. The bigger sheets can sometimes even be enough for a full costume. I said sometimes, so I don't know what you are making. You should decide for yourself how much you will need. These sheets of EVA foam come in three types. The black foam or low density foam, the gray foam or high density foam, or the dark gray slash ultra high density foam. Even though they can all be used to make the same things, kinda, there are some differences. The black low density foam, for example, is the softest and can be used to make organic shapes. Since it's pretty soft, it's also the foam that bends the easiest. So if you have to make weird shapes or for example horns, low density is the way to go. The gray or high density foam gets used the most to make armor and props out of. It bends a bit less easy than the low density foam, but it is sturdier. So you can often just combine low and high density as seen in this helmet. The organic shape is made with low density foam, while the the more flat armor pieces are made with high density foam. The helmet itself is all 5mm while the details are 2mm. Lastly we have UHD foam. This one is like the high density but even sturdier. For smaller props like daggers you often don't need a core either. These are all just foam sheets but foam bevels and dowels also exist. It's pretty much pre-cut pieces of foam that will help you add details and edges to the foam and it will save you a lot of time. Before I forget, LED foam exists too, but that's for another video. But to work with foam you need tools like a cutting mat, sharp knives, a dremel slash sanding tools, a heat gun and glue. These are just the basics. A cutting mat is a must have since you will be cutting your foam a lot and you probably want to keep your table. And to cut you need knives. There are two types of knives that get used the most. The box cutters just to cut the foam and the exacto knives for the smaller details. Make sure to keep your knives sharp. So buy spares or a knife sharpener for a more durable solution. A dull knife will make for bad cuts that look like this. And bad cuts and seams will still be visible long after you painted it. When cutting, make sure to keep your knife straight and press hard enough. This way you can cut the foam in one pass and avoid those ugly cut marks from before. Also avoid just pulling off your foam when you didn't make the cut deep enough. If you do end up with nasty edges, that's not the end of the world. Sometimes they can be cleaned up using a Dremel. This bit gets used the most in general. It can be used to dremel off excess foam when for example making a sword or an axe to make a sharp edge. As an example we used to dremel a lot in the smosh armor to make those claws. Just sanding paper is also handy to clean up your foam but it will of course take longer. Always make sure to wear a mask when dremeling. You do not want to breathe in the foam dust. To glue your foam together, contact cement is the most used glue. Just apply it to both sides you want to glue together and apply the contact cement using scrap foam or a stick. Make sure to not apply too much. Then wait around 3 minutes and press the two sides firmly together. We already have a full video on contact cement. Super glue is also handy to just glue on some details. And it takes less time. I don't recommend it to glue seams though, since it's pretty liquid and easy to spill. Hot glue is nice to glue your foam seams from the inside for example example, but I don't recommend it to glue your foam together, because you will end up with some nasty looking seams. However, it can be used on purpose to make some welding seams. Then we come to the heat gun. It warms up the foam so that you can shape it. A hair dryer will not work properly. Do not heat your foam with any other tool than a heat gun. Just point the heat gun to the foam and then shape it however you want, but overdo it a bit because it will bounce back a little bit.
bed. And then it will just stay in shape. A heat gun also heat seals your prop. This means it closes the cells of the foam. This is a very important step before priming and painting. Or you might end up with some weird looking results. It also removes most of the weird fuzzy foam that your sanding may cause. When heat sealing your prop, always move around the heat gun and don't take too long. If you take too long and point at the same place the whole time, you will burn your foam. Not only is that very toxic, but it's also just rendered useless now. Also watch out with heat gunning your glued seams. The heat may cause your earlier glue work to be undone. I think it goes without saying that a heat gun can be dangerous. So when you are done using it, just put it on the table like this. You do not want to burn down the house. And now we can start priming and painting it. Priming is very important before painting. You might think it's fine to just add the paint to the foam, but the foam will suck in most of the paint and your result will just look like painted foam. I can highly recommend using Flexbond or Plastidip as a primer to give an example. I will make a video on priming later, but it's pretty straightforward. With the basic set, here's a bonus round with all the cool things you can do with EVA foam. One, you can make some fun textures in it. Like for example, fake leather. Heat up your foam with a heat gun and then press in a wad of tinfoil. The texture will be there to stay, unless you apply heat again. Of course, this one still has to be painted. Another fun thing you can do with knives is to cut into your foam, but not all the way through. This way, you can pretty much make fun drawings in foam. When using your heat gun on it, those grooves will open up. Of course, it's almost impossible to do this with a two millimeter foam, as it will most likely just curl up. A Dremel also has many different bits that you can use to add some cool looking textures. A good wood burner also works fine to add some textures. Though this one will have the best result on low density foam to make for example a wood texture. 2. Slits If you cut into your foam with a tilted blade and not all the way through and repeat it but mirrored, you can just cut out a small strip from it. Sometimes you might need this to make some cool looking edges without having to glue two separate pieces. Watch out though because it's very easy to fumble here. So if you haven't done this before, maybe practice a bit before using this on your cosplay. You can even make bigger slits using a Dremel to fit a fiberglass rod. Whenever making for example a sword, you will always need a core in your prop. For most props, foam in itself is not sturdy enough and nobody likes a floppy sword. 3. Foam clay. You can work with foam clay on top of EVA foam since the foam clay will stick to the foam and you can just sculpt whatever you want. Foam clay is pretty much like any regular clay in the way that you can sculpt it but after letting it dry for like a day or two it will just be like solid foam. 4. Heat shaping. We already said that you can shape your foam with heat but you can also heat shape your foam using other objects, like I did with this ball. 5. Strapping. When making armor I'm assuming you also want to wear it and that's why you need to strap it. So here's an easy way to attach a strap. Best way to attach it is to make some cuts in the foam like the grid we did before and filling it up with some hot glue. Press in the strap and then add some glue on top. This strap will never again come loose. Six, laser cut it. If you have to make the same thing 200 times and just don't feel like it, or you want your cuts to be inhumanly accurate, it is possible to just cut your foam using a laser cutter. All three densities can be cut using it. Can you guess how many times I said foam in this video? I can keep talking about EVA foam forever, but I hope this is enough to help you get crafting. To get EVA foam, just go to cosplayshop.be. I can also highly recommend our shorts we have done on our YouTube, our Instagram and our TikTok for some quick tips and tricks. I will be making more deep dives, that's what I'm calling them, in the future. So be sure to subscribe. In case I did not respond to your question in this video, you can just drop it in the comments down below or even join our Discord. It's free, it's a fun community and you can just ask help whenever you feel like it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.